Welcome into Warchant.com, and we're going to have to do it because why wouldn't we? It's Florida State Miami memories, all time great moments throughout the history of this incredible rivalry. And even though it has been dampened some in recent years by the fact that neither program has been any good at all, we can still reflect. And in fact, between the three of us, as you see Gene and Corey there and myself, we're old enough to say now that what, guys, we haven't missed a Florida State Miami game in the moments in them in over 40 years combined easily, right? Yeah, I mean, my first one was 1984, 38 to 3. Um, uh, and, and yeah, I've been kind of, I've been watching all the games since, and I've been to probably 95% of them since then. So a lot of heartache and a lot of great moments too, as we'll see in this video. Yeah, mine's 1982, and Florida State wins that game 24 to 7, and that's a long time ago. So 82 for me and Gene, you're the oldest of the yeah, bunch. But I baby. saw 84. I mean, that was still <laughs> that was my freshman year, so that was uh, that was my first one too. So, so we're yeah. old, but we yeah. have. I'd like to think we have wisdom and perspective. Is what you need is what you need to understand. And right about now, you need every bit of that perspective. Yes. Right? <laughs> every bit of that perspective. So what we've what we've done here, assembled and been fortunate enough to do, we've got access to video and it's going to be fun. We're going to go over it with you. Why don't we just get started, guys? Because this is fun. It's right off the bat. It's Dexter Carter, 1989. I know neither one of you care, but I'm a senior in high school at the time. My dad brings me to the game. I'm excited about this. And right out the box, we get something exciting. Corey, you lead the way, baby. Yeah, so the context is that Florida State had lost two national championships the previous two years because of Miami. Yes. One was a two-point conversion, one was a blowout, but either way, Miami cost Florida State a championship in 87 and 88. So 89 comes around, they're number one in the country, their quarterback is out, so they got to they got to start this fresh-faced kid named Gino in the very first play of the game, and that that's probably as loud as I've ever heard that stadium consistently, even though it was 20,000 seats less than it is now because people were so riled up because of what had happened the previous two years. And then the very first play, Toretta throws an interception to Leroy Butler on the first play. And then Florida State's first play is a kind of innocent, innocuous handoff to Dexter Carter. And then the place just went ballistic. And here it is. Carter are the starting running backs. Handoff goes to Dexter Carter, tries to get outside, gets the corner turn. He is to the 30 yard line. Watch the camera shake. Yeah. Vic Frenzy losing his mind. Oh, Woohoo! Yeah, and and you got a sense too. It's so weird. That when do we stop was... having the gorilla there? <laughs> yeah, oh no, that's a good Let's question. Let's bring that tradition back. <laughs> and you got a sense too in that moment that nothing could happen to hurt Florida State. It's so weird how one play. I remember feeling bulletproof. Like, okay, well, this is it. Florida State's going to win this game. Every sign points to it. Who can bounce outside against Miami? One team in the country had players right. that could bounce outside against Miami. And, it was and, if, and if we can replay it back, um, Tom, I know you're the, the producer extraordinaire, the block that Edgar Bennett makes. Now, Edgar Bennett was a very good running back in his own right, but he's the yeah. fullback here. He ends up taking two yeah, right dudes there. out. Damn. Right there is a great block, and then Bernard Clark, Clark follows – or falls over his own guy. That is an incredible block that frees him. And then, oh, yeah, you got a first-round pick running out wide, making Miami look kind of slow. And, oh, yeah, that Miami team ended up winning the national championship. But yeah, you that beat them that year. That was the frustrating aspect of uh, this rivalry so many times, right, that Florida State either looked like and or was the better team, but then either stumbled along the way and Miami went on to find a way to get back and or Florida State lost only that game. So – we know the memories, uh, as you pointed to, Corey, are sometimes brutal. But uh, what we wouldn't give right now to see these two teams back being elite when the whole country anticipated this football game more right. than really any other game. And, and Gene, were, you were there, there too. You yeah, were I was there, there too, I, 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 Corey, uh, Jeff, Corey and I earlier last during the pandemic did a, a, a retrospective on this game with Kirk Carruthers. And I think you, yeah. you can't mention this game without talking about the incredible game that guy had. And it's not a play, but I think the, the, the biggest series – in his thing, remember Miami drove down to the one yard line. Carruthers recovers a fumble. Yeah, yeah. And Florida State drives ninety nine yards against this elite defense with the, all these guys, the uh, you know elite players that all went on to play in the NFL. And that was something, and I think that really kind of changed the game. And so I was, I'm sorry. Yeah, I was gonna say I was younger, a little bit younger than you guys at that game, but I was at that game. I think all three of us were probably at yeah. that game. Mm -hmm. And from start to finish, I'm just telling you, I don't remember that stadium oh, that being place, that yeah. loud. That fever pitch. It was back when their big games were at night, or many of them were at night. Yeah. Um, Florida State had already lost two games to start the season, but it kind of found itself with Peter Tom Willis. 
And Florida State fans thought, okay, we have the best team in the country. We just happened to lose those first two games, one to Brett Favre. And then this game kind of proved it. At the end of the year, Florida State was probably the best team in the country. Um, and a lot of it had to do with, well, with Dexter Carter and Edgar Bennett and PT. But that drive, I remember, Gene, because it was Bowden back in the day, they get the ball at the one-foot line after the fumble recovery. He immediately does a play-action 50-yard bomb to Ronald Lewis. Yeah. Because that's what that's what Bowden did. That's how he lived his life, and they end up going 99 yards and scoring. That was something. That was probably that one game, of my – go ahead, you, Jeff. You mentioned how good Carruthers was in that game. Do I have it – does memory serve? That was two interceptions in that game, right? Is that right? I, he Correct. at least had one. He also had the fumble recovery. He had two in the fumble recovery, and he had about yeah. 15 tackles. Yeah. So I think he got like the national player – of the week for his performance in that game. And I, also, you guys, I mean, yeah, that was probably my – that and the Choke and Doke were probably my two favorite home games in FSU history. But the thing about that game, and Corey, you guys remember this being in there, it was electric from the minute that opening kickoff to the end. You stood the entire game. That place was loud as heck. It never let up. And what was neat, that was that you had those two losses, but the week before you beat number 11 Auburn the week right. before. So what a great couple weeks in a row in Doe Campbell Stadium to live that life. Saturday nights at Doak, uh, it really never got any better. And I think a lot of people long for those days. It was a very special time. And, hey, look, nostalgia tends to get the best of us. But it really was because Florida State hadn't been great for all that long. And we hadn't been able to take it for granted. And we were still trying to get over those hurdles and win a national championship. Because, of course, it doesn't happen until we get to our next season in 1993 when Florida State does go on to win a national championship. Here's Charlie Ward to Matt Fryer, if I'm not mistaken here. And this one. Uh, I'm a student. I'm sitting next to I'm standing next to my buddy Stephen Rafferty, who's a film student at FSU at the time, and we're together, maybe slightly intoxicated and really chomping at the bit to get this win. And this play, along with another we're gonna show, uh, felt like it was gonna be the one to propel. And this is all about buying time. Here's Charlie Ward to Matt Fryer. Out of the shotgun, third down and about ten. Ward getting some pressure. Ward sap chasing him. Gets it away. He's got Fryer. And he hugs the cop. Yeah, and you got to give it up to Matt Pryor running away from Rohan Marley, who was a really good player in his own right. And when he catches that, he's almost at a standstill, and he just takes off. It's unbelievable, that play. Uh, and he's in the slot, as they're showing you in the replay there, and it's just basically he's going he's gonna to run that sideline pattern. And then all of a sudden he he realizes Charlie's in trouble and just runs, runs away from that, That's the thing with Charlie, though. I mean, you talk about you got Warren Sapp on your butt, and what he always does right there, he always has his head up. I mean, he can he can move around defensive linemen and linebackers chase him around. That head always stays up, as we'll see later in this year in Gainesville, kind of similar play when he hit Warwick Dunn, where he's keeping his head up. He rolls away from pressure, yep. finds that guy in stride. Yeah, so Charlie did a lot of special things. It's a fun memory to watch that again, and I remember being absolutely euphoric. Euphoric, And, again, Florida State fans at this point starving, desperate to see, you know, again, the success against Miami. And uh, you see this with Charlie Ward to Fryer. And then here we go, Gene, uh, also from the same game, right? Yeah. Here's, here's, here's the pick six that cements it in essence. I'll take him to feel comfortable in the game. I have no idea. There's a pass intercepted by Devin Bush. Over. Good job, Keith Jackson. Yeah, Keith Jackson yeah. can bring it. Oh, wait, back in the day, wait a minute. We got we got a special cameo coming up here, guys. There it is. Wait for it. There, there he is. is. Hey, the Rock. He seems really happy about that play. So sad. He wasn't even on the field. Well, they were offense. He. I don't think he was on the field for the Ward play either. He was a. Uh, he was an He's, okay player, right, in college? I mean, he played yeah, He was okay. He, he uh, Corey, he gets on the field uh, on special teams when we're attempting the extra point after the ward play. Oh, okay. There you go. I think he did get a sack of Charlie in that game. At least that's what he said at one of his uh, his appearances in Tallahassee, is that yeah. he sacked that Rudy Poo, Charlie Ward, or whatever, <laughs> well, whatever he used, however he used to talk. But that, I mean, again, we're old dudes. We get it. But th those times where you can see a play where Charlie Ward is rolling out from Warren Sapp, you know, a college football Heisman winner, an NFL Hall of Famer. And then the next play is Devin Bush, who was a first-round pick, intercepting a pass. His son was a first-round pick. Um, just it's cool to be able to relive these things and just what a, a magical rivalry this was. Now, I know, again, the context here, why it's so big is Miami had won three in a row in this rivalry. The last two had cost Florida State national championships. Mm -hmm. So, again, the place is – look at that place. It is a fever pitch. 
And understand the, the last two games that Florida State had lost to Miami, they had the lead in the fourth quarter. Well, this one you had the lead in the fourth quarter. It was 21 to 10, but it wasn't over. And then as Keith Jackson said right there, it was over after that. And the reason yeah. I picked this one, guys, sorry, Jeff, is that, you know, to me, being there, like you said, Corey, having those two games in a row, the wide rights, Miami had won their national championship, Florida State had not. I remember being in those stands and like literally we're all holding our breaths. You're up yeah. 21 yeah. to 10 and you're like, this is enough because what was it, 16 to 3 and 87? I mean, yeah, that, I mean it's three. the same thing. I mean, 19 to 3. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you just didn't feel safe. You're like, it's Miami. You know, Florida State's the better team. They've outplayed in the whole game, but it's within two scores. I think there's six minutes left in the game. We've seen crazy crap happen before in this series, and you could just hear the collective sigh. It wasn't like so much a celebration. It was just enormous relief. As that Jevin is 100%. Is that thing in the end zone. That is, I'm glad you brought up 87 because I was in high school and heartbroken. I mean, for years after that game, 26-25, and seeing how that happened and watching Michael Irvin go down the side. I mean, I, I'm still mad about it. Yeah. And I, I can I can still remember my dad and I walking out of that stadium, and he you know, I could just see the look on his face. As much as anything in the real world could hurt, that one hurt him. Yeah. You could just tell. He was like – it was almost like a, an affront to something that happens to your family. He couldn't believe it. And, uh, yeah, so so you're right. Now you fast forward to that moment, and you're holding your breath. Please, somebody in this game, and that's the play that ends the game. And you realize then uh, the Wicked Witch is dead because you had had 17-16 and 19-16 and all that, oh, pain and agony. From there, Warwick Dunn. You can't have Florida State Miami highlights without a Warwick Dunn play, and this is a good one from 96. 20, here's the snap. Blitz coming. Picked up nicely. Dunn pops free. 25. Oh, he's to the 45. He's to the 40 yard. And the guy went to a knee. <laughs> he's looking for his jock straps down there somewhere. And then Ward Dunn always had a little bit of this in him. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> he had a little bit of that in him. Now, he was yeah. a very nice man, still is. Soft spoken kid at the time. Yeah. But he had a little bit of that in him um, where he would just, you know, he put his ear up like, I can't hear you because they were making a lot of noise. <laughs> Go back to freeze on the juke. I didn't give you enough time. There you see the Jets. He runs away from a lot of fast guys, but this is so that, wrong. There he, he, he yeah, sticks his foot. Yeah. Man. And they're, they're just like, you know, or I think that's Earl Little, number four. Yeah. No chance. He, he doesn't even dive. He kind of stops running. Yeah. But, again, the context here is Florida State hadn't won down in Miami since 84, since mm -hmm. I was there the, in a 38-3 game. A lot of close losses, a lot of bitter losses in that, in that uh, rivalry down in Miami. And so this was the year. They finally went there and did it. It wasn't easy. I think it started out easy. It was like 17 nothing, and it became a game. Rock Preston had a huge run in that game, too, because he was really good as well. But that game is probably – it's one of my all-time favorite work done moments. It's not as big as the – because they didn't win a national championship. It's not as big as the Florida win in 93. But just the crowd's going crazy. They're trying to believe in this Miami team. And then the best player on the field makes your safety look like, I don't know, like a toddler. And then just runs through all of them and kind of shuts the whole crowd up is awesome. Yeah, they and, pull away late. You're right, Corey. That game got too close for a while there. I think that final's 34-16, and I remember getting nervous at some point in that game. Think this is ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. You'd lost five in a row. That's a thing, too. Both of these, we talked about some of these games, and it's almost like the context of where Florida State was at vis-a-vis -vis Miami. You mentioned they hadn't won there in 10 years down in Miami. They would lost five in a row, and all of a sudden, but this had kind of changed the stage. This kind of shifted the power base went to Florida State after this, really being the top team in the state. There's really no doubt after this game. Probation yeah. helped, too. Either way, you take it. Yeah, Miami uh, got getting hit with – Corey, you don't, you, don't have to, you don't have to throw that in there. No, I'm just saying it was awesome. Then the next over. year – They just couldn't keep – they couldn't clean up their program like so many other decades of Miami football. Was that the uh, – had that – that was a bonus when we didn't bring it in. I think that's the next year. Was it 47 nothing? 47 yeah. to nothing. Next year, and we had – by bonus one, we didn't get it. They didn't have it and whatever. But is when the Miami quarterback got thrown into the goalpost. Into yeah. the goalpost. That was, that, that was the bonus play right there. Also, anytime – if we could get the footage, I doubt – it's probably hard to find it's us dancing up 47 to nothing before the kickoff right Getting ready to kick off after going up 47 to nothing the entire front line on the special teams is dancing they're not even looking at miami like their guys got backs turned just dancing like, <laughs> like they're, it's insane and the miami players just have to sit there and wear it down 47 yeah. to nothing it was beautiful uh now we move ahead to a game that actually florida state loses but this is a game that in in, in the lore of great players this is the hit right this is the guy this is the greatest hit marvin jones this picture 
this freeze picture, this frozen moment in time where he crushes Larry Jones is in a lot of garages, including mine or man caves all around the country. If you're a Noel, here you go. The first half, Miami has all three timeouts. Second down, 11 from the 20. Loretta throws. Oh. Oh. That is indeed a greeting for Larry Jones. <laughs> This oh, is Keith a play was good. In, Indeed, a greeting for Larry yeah. Jones. The, and by the way, I love that Keith Jackson's not alarmed by the hit because this is men. These are men playing football. And this is the oh, nowadays, what football would happen, play. Jeff? If that was oh. in a primetime game, what happens? I mean, he's oh, ejected. Everybody screams. Yeah. Dirty player. Five yellows come in quick. Everybody's just shocked and saddened. How could you do that? But this is how you play the game. And actually, I think it's shoulder pad here. Let's let's double check. Oh, that's a beautiful yeah. hit. Look at that. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. I don't oh, think he hits him with the helmet at all. He doesn't hit him with the helmet, but they would have called a penalty on that. They would have somehow sure. said he was defenseless. Yeah. Well, he was, thanks to his quarterback. <laughs> you think Larry Jones went back to Geno and was like, come on, man, really? But like, you mean, didn't see 55? Like, what, <laughs> what, what was your key there to think that I was about to be out in the open? By the way, 55 is a Heisman candidate, guys. <laughs> yeah, it's like he's the best player on the field. He he's awesome. Got... He's always been awesome since he got here. What are you doing to me for a oh, four-yard game? Word. And we, we yeah. would be reminiscent if we did not bring up Derek Erickson's quote. I think this was after the game that Marvin Jones is the best linebacker he's ever seen in college football. Yeah, he's he on the poster. Yeah, it was on yeah. their Buckus uh, campaign poster, and it, because he had two guys up for the Buckus that year, Barrow and Armstead, maybe yeah. Darren Smith too. By the way, those were the linebackers in that game: Michael Barrow, Jesse Armstead, Darren Smith, Marvin Jones, and Derek Brooks. And think I about mean, it, Corey, Patrick, and and the other guy was a crime. The two ends for Miami that day were the best two players for them. Uh, they wreaked havoc in yeah. that game. Charlie couldn't yeah. get away from them. Yeah, and then for Florida State, if you remember, as much as I love Marvin, and he's my favorite player in Florida State history, um, it, it's it's Simpson. Carl Simpson went nuts in that game yeah. for Florida State. They couldn't block him. And yeah. uh, it's just an indicator when you've got guys that get drafted in the first two rounds or dominate or All-Americans. And, and it's funny, you're thinking to yourself, well, Marvin makes that play, but here are four players that all went to the league, all drafted, all incredible players in their own right. Really, it was at every single position back then. Oh, Marvin, if you just would have come back one more year, hmm. that last at 93. I know they won the national championship. You could have had Cowart Brooks and Jones back there together. How yeah, they probably that beat Notre the Dame. linebacker core of all time. They, they, yeah, they beat Notre Dame. I think Dame they probably Marvin beat Notre Dame. There. But, yeah, the, the Dennis Erickson quote was something about, like, because Marvin was great as a freshman in 90. Yeah. And he's like, look, Marvin Jones was six foot. He was like 6'2", 215 pounds, and the best player on the field. Now he's 6'2", 245, and he's faster. Yeah. And he's better. Like he just he couldn't believe how good Marvin Jones was. And Marvin Jones rightfully won the uh, won the Butkus. I think he won the Lombardi. And he was, I think, finished fourth in the Heisman voting, a middle linebacker. Yeah. With no like huge pick six touchdown plays, just being awesome. He finished fourth in the Heisman voting. Trying to scheme around him must have been impossible because he could go sideline to sideline. He's big enough to fill. He could cover he block he him. And every time he hits you, you went down. Did you ever see anybody break a tackle from him? No, and he had hands that were the size of Texas. I mean, I've <laughs> shook those hands before, and it's embarrassing. You feel like a child when he engulfs your hand. It's I figured you would have kneeled down and kissed his hand. I, I would have liked to. I actually ran into Marvin at a Florida State-Miami game a few years back down in Miami, and he was – he was still big, still looked like he could play, still looked like a giant. It was unbelievable. Well, we have to show Miami missing a field goal before we round this yes. out. And we could have kept going, guys. They're highlights for days. But uh, one last thing here to circle back. I remember walking into the stadium uh, before the start of the 92 season for Florida State first home game. And remember, you used to be able to get those silly shirts that always chided the opponent and all that other stuff. But I just bought a very simple shirt. It was a picture of Marvin Jones, and it was the back of Marvin Jones. And you just saw it in the back of his shirt, and it said, just try to keep up with the Joneses. I think I still have that, that shirt. same shirt, Jeff. It's a great shirt, man. I miss him. Uh, all right. Miami missing a field goal. This is 2005. We have had way too many issues on special teams over the years against Miami, to say the least. So this yeah. felt like sweet justice. No. Another kicking mistake for Poker in Miami. Can this be the Knowles year? 
The kicking oh, game oh. is finally. This is Jeff's favorite is. part. Ball is low. The kicker should have still tried to kick it. <laughs> <laughs> he just By flies the in there, kicks somebody in the helmet. A couple things. That kid, number 39, is the punter. Um, and he had been, I believe, at Florida State's camp, and they kicked him out. Oh. If I if I, I recall remember that. Correct, if what did he get kicked out for? He we he was secretly trying to recruit for Miami. Oh, man. He was oh. dropping snaps. Good and for he him. Was, <laughs> he kept <laughs> dropping snaps. Like get out of our camp, man. If I remember that correctly, that's true. Also, I was on the roof for this game, and I remember how the noise rising up. That back then, I was on the roof for every game, and and you know I can still remember that. That was uh, good times and a uh, sweet revenge there. There's a nice man in Larry Coker who is. I mean, if we, is Larry Coker alive? Does anybody know how Larry's doing? I think, I think he's he alive. <laughs> you he never is. see Larry Coker's. You boy. don't know. When was the last time you saw Larry Coker? It's been Not a, a great This coach, was the last nice time. Guy. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, the, to me, the, this was another one of those, man. This was some, it was just such relief. You'd lost, I think the six in a row, it was the longest streak, losing streak to Miami in the series. And then for them to lose in this poetic way, uh, the irony of it, of all the cooking woes. Kicking yeah. woes. And then I think the thing, too, and I think Tom's got the still shot. I remember this because covering the team at the time. And I got to know David Castillo, even going back to high school, covered the Georgia-Florida All-Star game. Really good guy. He's a doctor here in town. For him, I remember at the end of the game as the clock ran out, here he is pu pulling the Bjorn Borg pose, you know, as this yeah. game. Because he was going to become the only player in NCAA history to Six lose times. to the same team seven times. Seven Seven because they played a bowl game that they right. lost to Miami twice that one year. So he would have had seven losses against Miami, and that's his hometown team. You can see the relief. I remember on the field seeing him going, "Man, I feel good. I feel so good for this guy. Such a good guy. He deserves this. A guy that played with a had a fractured foot at one point. Half his fingers are broke, and he's he was a baller. Well, and it was it was it wasn't just they had lost whatever it was six times in a row. You know, three of them were directly from field goals. Like yes. you missed the one in two thousand. You missed the one in 02 where the Jester kid dancing or prancing around Bathia. Oh, and then in 03, 03, Bathia missed again in the in the bowl game to give them a lead. Now, it wasn't a last second one, but it was with a few minutes left. And, of course, he missed that one too. So, for them – and you saw – that's why that crowd – like, always crowds are going nuts when, the, when it's a game-tying field goal on the line. But that's why the crowd was like that for that moment because it had been – Years of heartache with special teams, not just 91 and 92, but recent losses mm -hmm. because of special teams. And the place is going nuts. You've actually got a chance to win. You've put up all of, I don't know, 100 yards of offense, 87 yards of offense, and you're going to win the game if this kid misses the field goal. Well, well, I think Weatherford had 77 yards passing in that game. That's how bad also, it was. Also, uh, you mentioned yeah. that we play Miami in the bowl game down in the Orange Bowl uh, again, the, the rematch. Uh, and lose 16-14, we could have taken a highlight from that game because that's Greg Jones. Oh, yeah, Sean that was Taylor a good one. And just runs his ass over like he's a child. It's a thing of beauty. Well, and there, and that's the problem is there are a lot of highlights from losses, like Van Over's yeah. return. Stanford uh, Samuels doing the old – Stanford uh, Samuels uh, hit was an incredible hit. Uh, the throwback in 86 from Keith Ross to Dexter Carter, a 100-yard kick return, which yeah. is just an incredible play. But they lost all those games. But um, the rivalry, you know, Miami fans can sit here and remember some tough losses too. Obviously, we've been on the wrong side too many times. But, you know, you think back, a blocked extra point is a hell of a way to lose a game. That's a tough one. Uh, yeah, block That's at the rock. That was another yeah. great yeah. one. That was on the list. And I mean, you had the lead in the 14 for the whole game. Yeah. Florida State gets lucky with this crazy deflected pass to Carlos Williams. And then the, the, the local kid scores the game-winning touchdown and flashes the 305 up as a freshman, and you're like, yep, we're never beating this team again. Yeah, and then, I walked out of the yeah. stadium that night. Uh, I went to that game with Matt Britton, and I'll never forget we're walking out of the stadium, and two Miami fans got into a fight with each other. Because the one, because the one Miami fan said, "Look, we're just not better than them. We, we, we probably shouldn't have even been in that game. We're not better." And he told that his friend told him to shut the hell up. And then he said, "No, we're never going to beat him again. We're just garbage." And then the kid punched him. It was awesome. Okay, good. It's nice, good to see nice. families turning on each other. Yeah. And if Jamar Forson catches the uh, the play the next uh, year, maybe they do never beat Florida State. That's true. But I don't know why I had to end on that note. That's not yeah. good. We're not going to end on that note. <laughs> we just want you to know, at one time, this was the best rivalry and rivalry in all of sports. And mm. uh, someday it may be again. If not, it'll be very one-sided Florida State over Miami because we believe in our ability to come back. There's not so much, although we're decided underdogs going into this game. Uh, we wanted to share some moments from three old guys who've seen a lot of them between Florida State and Miami. And all of them, even the pain, uh, 
it brings back fond memories. I think we agree. I mean, moments of time where we were with people we loved, uh, when we were students, when we were with friends, when we were with parents. So it uh, it's fun to look back. Well said, Jeff. Yeah, well time, said, buddy. Thank you're you, right. Guys. Part part of this is just me being with – like you mentioned, you're with your buddy, you remember, from school, sitting yeah. next to him. I remember sitting with my best friend, you know, during that 89 game and all that. So, yeah, you're right. So much of it is about the memories. Let's hope the rivalry becomes intense and focused and uh, for high stakes yet again at some point. But in the interim, we hope you enjoyed this. Tom Lane, great job producing it. For Corey Clark, for Gene Williams, I'm Jeff Cameron. Go Knowles. We'll talk to you next time on War Chant TV.